Taltala, representative from WHO, Dr. Sundar. And uh, thank you, Staff Nurse uh, Washaka, for being MC today, Medical Superintendent of uh, Tambavua Tumi Hospital, and our staff here in uh, Tambavua. I want to extend my gratitude to the uh, organizing committee uh, for today's event. And this allows us to be able to celebrate our national TB program and join with our counterparts around the world in our concerted efforts to advocate collectively against this disease. The theme, as we all know, is to invest to end TB and save lives. And each year, WHO commemorates a World TB Day to raise public awareness on the devastating health, social, and economic consequences of TB and to step up country efforts to end the global TB pandemic. The date marks the day, as we all know, in 1882, when Dr. Koch announced that he had discovered the bacterium that caused TB, opening the way forward for diagnosis and curing this disease. TB remains one of the world's deadliest infectious killers. Each day, over 4,000 people lose their lives to TB, and about nearly 30,000 fall ill to TB, while this is preventable and curable. The global efforts to combat TB have saved an estimated 66 million lives since 2000. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has reversed years of progress made in the fight to end TB. For the first time in over a decade, TB deaths increased in 2020. Globally, nearly 6 million people were afflicted with the disease, while approximately 1.3 million people succumbed to the disease. And it's sad to say that Fiji has not been spared from the phenomenon, recording a number of 590 cases in 2019, with an incidence of 66 per 100,000 population, while in 2020, our nation recorded a decrease with 431, an incident rate of 48 per 100,000 population. Last year, we recorded 341 lab-confirmed TB cases, which is, again, is a slight decrease. So whilst uh, it looks like that we are decreasing, we also worry that uh, during the time of COVID, there may be patients with TB that haven't come forward. And now that the restrictions have been lifted, uh, we're also ready to see if we can be able to pick up cases in the community. Before I came here this morning at about 8 o'clock, I was in Bunindawa talking to our community health workers in Neta Asiri and also the Turani Koros. <clears throat> One of the important things that I said to them in their role is their role of surveillance. The role of surveillance in the community. If they, if every morning I've asked the community health workers, if they least spend at least one or two hours in the morning, just going around to every house in the community and checking if everyone is all right. If there's a child with diarrhea, that child may need to go to the nearest hospital or health center. If there's somebody with fever, they need to keep an eye on them because we need to be able to nip the issues in the bud. As we all know, the complications of TB can be drastic, can be horrendous. And therefore, being able to identify it early and treat it early and prevent others from getting TB is very important. Since 1950, the TB program has progressed a long way in terms of diagnostic tools like traditional X-ray machines to portable X-ray. As you were sharing your story, Ms. Tola, I have a close family member who also had TB back in the days. And he would tell me the story that every um, one month, they will have a clinic. And in, before that clinic, they'll have an X-ray. And uh, on that day of the clinic, my, my uh, close relative would uh, tell me the story that on the day of the clinic, he would wake up early and he would dress up very well, comb his hair very well, because he was hoping to look too well so that he can go home. Unfortunately, his x-rays would often say a different story, so he would stay again. And back in the days, he said that he stayed for nearly 10 months. He's now completely driven, completely uh, different from the type of treatment that we receive nowadays. We talked about your story, how you've had two weeks of treatment, and now you're having treatment at home under DOTS. And the antibiotics that we're using now are completely different from the antibiotics back in the days. Back in the days, his treatment was an injection, and I believe it was streptomycin injection back in the days. I wouldn't want to have streptomycin every day for 10 months. So I'm very thankful that with the advances in healthcare and medical care, we are making um, compliance better and giving patients an opportunity to be able to complete part of the treatment here and also then head home. In efforts to address the health threat, the ministry plans to push the National and Pacific Political TB Caucus 
in collaboration with WHO and the Global TB Caucus. We now have been using the Gene Expert machine um, as we've been using it specifically for COVID-19. We also know that a module on the Gene Expert machine that we've been using before to be able to uh, screen and test for TB. We want to be able to use the Gene Expert machines that we have in our subdivisional hospitals to be able to also test for TB so that uh, the ability to be able to uh, have an investigation and make a diagnosis is actually faster. In line with year, this year's uh, theme, the ministry has invested in refurbishing a room, a two-bed isolation ward for inpatient clinical management of drug-resistant TB isolation. The isolation ward will be officially opened after this and to, re to re recap recapitulate information on the characteristics of TB, it is an airborne infection as Ms. Stoll has said, released into the air when someone with infectious TB coughs or sneezes, the risk of an infection can be reduced with good ventilation, natural light such as UV, and good hygiene. Lastly, I'd like to reiterate appreciation in making this commemorative event memorable. The ministry through the TB program will continue strengthening prevention, early detection, and successful completion of comprehensive curative treatment, and also to avert the risk of multi-drug TB resistance. And one would ask, why do we every year have this event? We have it because TB is still a threat. We have it because there are countries that have greater incidence of TB than we do. We have it because we also have cohorts of our community that have TB. We have this event because of multi-drug resistance. We want to continue raising awareness we want us all not to drop the ball on TB because it is indeed preventable and is indeed curable. Nawalebu, Daniel Ban, thank you. Nawalebu, Mr. Tolo. Thank you.